Um, thank you everyone for coming here today. Um, we are going to give a talk about the CF motion. And uh, here is the agenda for today. First, we're going to explain why we're here, what is CF motion, and how it works. Then we have a demo. And at the end, we will show our roadmap and our future work and some other related work. So who are we? Interesting question. So my name is Tim. And I'm here, yeah. Uh, we are software engineers, and we have been Cloud Foundry contributors for about two years. Uh, we, since we graduated from the Pivotal Dojo two years ago, uh, we have a small team both in Cambridge and San Francisco about, like, called Dell MC Dojo. Mm, so what is Dell MC Dojo? Oh. Uh, so the Dojo in Japanese literally means the place of the way where students come and practice martial art. Like, mm -hmm. So does that mean <coughs> we practice karate all day? Is that true? <laughs> uh, not quite. Uh, we do it sometimes, but uh, not recently anymore. Uh, actually, we have two main focuses. The first one is um, we contribute to Cloud Foundry projects. And also, we innovate on those uh, projects, like come up with new ideas and uh, re doing research. The second purpose is we do digital transformation, where we adventurize pair programming and test-driven development among the internal teams at DMC, Dell MC. Yeah, Dell MC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in short, we have two focus, Cloud Foundry and digital transformation, right? Yes. So uh, Zubin, can you remind me of why are we here today? Why are we here? <laughs> Come on. We're here to yeah. provide a solution that yeah. um, a lot of Cloud Foundry users may have uh, the problem that a lot of Cloud Foundry may have in now, which is like uh, migrating their applications from one Cloud Foundry instance to another with all the services. Um, so um, what is, um, let me give you a scenario here. So uh, I assume most of you guys are developers. If you are not a developer, you're probably in the wrong room. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we always have some applications running somewhere. <laughs> Let's say I have applications running on PWS and my applications highly relies on distributed database. And you know I'm really curious about Bitcoin, and I actually look into the Bitcoin and figure out the actual implementation, which is blockchain, is way more cooler than Bitcoin itself, because there's another version uh, of how you do the distributed database. So I was thinking maybe I can use blockchain in my own uh, application. So, but sadly, PWS doesn't support that yet. But happily, another Cloud Foundry instance do support blockchain as a service. So what should I do? Uh, look very simple. I just have to push my application again onto the new Cloud Foundry. Yeah, you're right. It's totally true. But yeah. that's only the first step. Um, so normally, in order to make this migration, you also need to migrate all those services that bind it to your application. You can definitely do all those steps manually. Um, but it's kind of like tedious. You might have mistakes here. Some of them might be critical. You might have data loose or a certain amount of downtime. Hmm. You know, Zubin, I still don't get what you say because I'm a very chill developer. So I, <laughs> I don't mind spending my time repushing the app and redo like five services. There's no problem at all. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah. I believe you. But let me ask you some other questions. Yeah. Um, do you want to <coughs> run your applications in a very old, uh, slow computer? Uh, no, I don't. OK. Yeah. Do you want to have a smaller number on your uh, PWS monthly statement? Yes. OK, yeah. fair enough. For, so for reasons like uh, better performance, lower cost, stronger security, or compliance, Sometimes we do want to migrate our applications from one Cloud Foundry instance to another. Even as the individual developers like Tin care, uh, care so much about these facts. Uh, as a company, those facts attached to their business a lot might hurt their business. So let's say 
I'm a uh, operator uh, that in charge of hundreds of applications, all the applications running in the public clouds. Because uh, the private clouds we just built has so many benefits as we talked, like a strong, better performance, lower cost, a stronger security or compliance. We, now we want to move all the applications to the private ones. So what should I do? Uh, like previous slides, we need to repush all those uh, applications again and also all those services bind to those applications. Instead of doing just like once, now I have to do it again and again and again. Oh. So mistakes could be way more easily made here and uh, any of them could hurt our business, may, make trouble to our business. So let me count. So five times 100 application is 500 <laughs> services. Hmm. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, see, uh, that's, yeah. Um, that's why we're here to provide our solution, which is self motion. So, yeah. Tim, what is self motion? Uh, so, I, I got a definition here. It's a tool for app mobility among cloud foundries. Mm -hmm. yeah. That sounds still very abstract. Can you give us more detail about how actually it works? Yeah, so uh, I prepare a very beautiful. Uh, architecture slide here. Uh, hope you guys don't fall asleep. Uh, so, I, I, let's say that I'm an operator, right? And I have my Cloud Foundry instant on the left side. And now I want to move an application to the right side, which is Pivotal Web Service. So, I check my environment. I see there's an application binding to my SQL service. Now, looking further, I saw traffic coming to a load balancer to the app. So how do I move this using safe motion? First of all, I will push what, a, what we call the safe motion agent on both of the clouds. Then using the command line tool, we say, okay, move my application. Then the tool will contact the agent on the left side and backing up the data into a storage, cloud storage somewhere. And then on the right side, the agent gonna pull the data and restore it into a new MySQL instance. At the same time, it gonna bring up another app, like why I'm drinking tea. Like, um, then it will, after everything is done, it's by the application to the app, and or to the MySQL instance, and then redirect the load balancer. Hmm, what happened? <laughs> Uh, did, I, I think my, some guys might be out like me. Uh, it's like, it's very um, like uh, graphic stuff here. And so <laughs> since I'm experienced, I have another uh, demo for you guys to show how actually it works. Um, so we, as you can see, we have two windows uh, open here. The top one is the, uh, a terminal open to show how we use self motion. And the bottom one is the browser open to show our demo applications. So we already have two Cloud Foundry instances. We have our internal uh, PCF. We call it Dojo. And uh, we also uh, have our PWS. So our goal here today is move our demo application running in our internal PCF, which is Dojo, to PWS. So let's get started. Um, first, let's take a look at what we have on our internal uh, PCF, which is Dojo. So we have a script. Basically, the script will be all uh, tagged to our internal PCF and do the login. Uh, let's do a set of apps. Uh, as you can see, we have two applications. One is the agent, uh, as Tim already uh, talked. Another one is our demo applications. So the demo application is basically show a bunch of albums. All the albums will actually uh, live inside the uh, MySQL database. So now we are going to add a new one to show that uh, during the migration, the, the data actually persists. So as you can see, uh, we add a new one, and it show up here. Then let's go back to our terminal. And we are already in our, in our, root, uh, project, in the root folder of our project of our demo application. And we, have, we create a file called uh, multi-cloud. So 
basically, this file will contain all the information about the binded services. Uh, so in our case, uh, we only have one, which is MySQL. For each of the service, it will also has uh, all the information about what is the service name and what is the plan name in different marketplace of different uh, cloud foundries. So in our case, let, let, uh, yeah, for example, uh, MySQL in PWS is called ClearDB. Uh, the provider is ClearDB, and the free plan is called Spark. That's how cloud, uh, CF Motion knows about all the services. Okay, so let's continue. Let's uh, go to our PWS to see what we have there. So we have a same script for that. Um, we are logging to uh, PWS, and if we do a CF apps, we should be able to uh, see only one application running, which is our agent. Yep. Uh, so let's get started. So in order to use CF motion, we need to give him three different arguments. The first one is the um, uh, application name you want to use for the uh, on the destination cloud foundry instance. The second argument uh, is the alias for the for the source cloud foundry instance, which is our internal one we call it Dojo. And the last one is the alias for the destination cloud foundry instance, which in our case is PWS. So first, we will target to PWS and we push our latest uh, 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 late, our application with the latest change to PWS, and then it target back to uh, our Dojo, and then let the agent do the restoring. Basically, uh, grab all the data in the uh, MySQL services and put it into a file and push the file to a third-party uh, storage, and then target back to PWS, create a new MySQL service instance there. And then uh, let the agent down retrieve the backup file we just pushed, and then re uh, restoring, the, restoring the data in the backup file into the service instance we just created. And then after everything's been done, uh, bind the service instance into, the, into our demo applications at the end, do some cleanup, and the last step is to start our application. So, theoretically, uh, we should be able to see our second applications in our PWS environment. So, if we do a CF apps, we should be see our uh, demo application. Mm. Yep. <laughs> and now, if we go to the application, we should be able to see um, to see the the album we just added. So, those this. This demo basically shows how we use that motion and the data actually persists during the migration. Um, thank you. Wait, something not right here. Well, I noticed that there's no load balancer or like there are two domains name, right? Yeah, good catch. Yeah. You're totally right. Uh, so, so Cloud Foundry, oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, Self Motion is a fairly new project. We just work on a couple of weeks. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, stories in a backlog, uh, including load balancer. So um, let me give you, give you an example. For, for non-stateful services, if you are using Self Motion, there will be no downtime, no uh, data loops. For uh, stateful services, we would, be, we would do the incremental backup for, for all those services. Basically, as Tim said before, uh, we will constantly do the uh, backup. So when it comes to the point, we want to do the migration. The difference between those two databases or uh, some other structure would be very minimal. So we can either do a blue-green uh, update with uh, minimum um, data loss or zero data loss, because the difference between those two is, could be uh, optimum to zero. And also, if we want to make sure that there's no data, um, data loose at all, we can uh, do a red, red green update. And with, uh, cause the difference is small, it's optimum to zero. The, the downtime would be also based on the difference. Mm. I see. And in the future, we actually, we introduce something called a policy driven server. Um, so this server will keep track of all your Cloud Foundry instances. And then 
it will, it will receive something we call the policy files. Let's say that you want to migrate your app application because your Cloud Foundry instance keep failing uh, your application for like five times a year, then you can specify the metric for this policy file to say migrate your app because if, if you see that it reached certain limit of failure, then uh, yep. So this is a po policy driven server. Yeah, so uh, that's uh, two like uh, features we want to implement in the future, in the late future. Mm. And also we have some other related projects from Dell EMC. Uh, one, one of them is Natsku. So what does Natsku do is basically uh, we are replicate the whole production environment, not just the data, but also with all the applications and VMs uh, into a development environment. So. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no man Good can catch. kill Nasco. <laughs> so, so let's say um, there's a big bug slowly crawled into our production environment and stays there forever because our environment, environment is another parallel world of our production environment. So there's another version of this bug crawled into our environment. So traditionally, uh, in order for the administrators or the developers to debug the problem. Uh, the need to, for the developers, they're only allowed to look at all the logs to debug the problem. It's kind of really hard to do that because they're not, allowed, they're not allowed to touch the production environment at all. But if we have those uh, identical development environments, uh, the, it would be very easy for the developers to debug the problem. They can just jump into the development environment and then do whatever they want to to find the bug and do whatever the, the want to kill the bug. So that's uh, what does NASCO do. And we are also have another project, which yeah. is. Yeah, uh, which is called Recover Poi. So now let's travel forward in time for like 50 years when Zubin and I sell this CF Motion. And we became millionaires now. <laughs> so we are really rich. And, uh, which is bad and not true. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we have two data centers under our name. So you see Ten and Zubin's data center. And we use this recover POI product to back up uh, my, da my data into his data center. Uh, and because I was so rich, I, I mean, I will be so rich that I built my data center on top of a mountain because I, have, I want to have a good view. <laughs> Finally, I realized it's a volcano mountain. So it's a, it erupt and and now lava eating all my data. So I have to call Zubin, like, can you back me up? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> like, and totally, finally, I agree after a long conversation. So he just have to redirect the load balancer to his data center, and everything is safe and sound. Cool. Yeah, so that's all we have for you guys today. Uh, yeah. And we would love to take any questions. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the yeah, yeah. So we did some investigation uh, previously. So one of them is to do uh, the incremental backup, not through the database, but through the the file system. So, uh, but you need to encounter you need to in control of the, the backend service so you can have control of the file system. So we did some incremental backup of the file system, the whole file system. So in that case, those models would work for every single yeah. like, different uh, database, whatever service you want. Also, we, have, we figured out like, uh, for, for database like uh, MySQ or MongoDB, uh, they have, they have the, uh, a way for us to do the incremental backup without the control of the backend service. They have uh, the, log file, the log file system, a uh, log file uh, mechanism. So basically, uh, if you have the database access, you can have some binary to generate a log file that we are basically uh, um, uh, the, like uh, um, information about the whole database. You can have this log file to create an identical uh, database. 
So we can like uh, do the incremental backup of the log file itself. So in that case, um, like uh, you, you, even though you don't have the like a control of the backend service, you still can be able to do the incremental backup for the for that kind of service. Mm -hmm. But that is uh, for now uh, we found only in support for the MongoDB and the MySQL and some MySQL um, related um, <laughs> database. Yep. Is that good? Answer the question. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he he have. Uh, I the the project is another team's project. If you are interested, I uh, I can give you the like information. You can talk more detailed about that. Is that okay for you? Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Currently, it's uh, in our internal um, <laughs> GitHub. Uh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are from Dell EMC, so uh, yeah. we are talking to our PM. Um, we, if you are interested, we can like uh, share the contacts or something. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Nice. So uh, I wanted to make sure what your, your current status is of the load balancer. Can you support two different pod families at the same time? Can you balance the, the application between the, the two boundaries? Uh, so that load balancer is not like a real load balancer. It's more like a, it's more like a, a traffic redirection. So it's yeah. not that like smart act, actually like dynamically read the load uh, the, the 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 traffic. It's only like for the domain change. Say yeah. that like your application run on PCF, it has like a run the I/O domain. But for the, for the user, they don't want to notice the, the your application change, right? They, they only know that you are like actually like DellEMC.com. Don't want to notice that you've migrated from this Cloud Foundry to another one. So the so the load balancer is actually using more like a DNS server for us in this case. Is that answering your question? That's the way I want it. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Yeah. Nice, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. User provide. Uh, it uh. would be if you if you are using through uh, the second uh, like approach as that like uh, just uh, have the act doesn't need to have the backend service. It will just like as the normal one just copy your data. So uh, it will copy another one. Yes, yes. And what about Yeah, that's the low balancer one. Like, uh, we, we want to use low balancer to, as the way to route your stuff. Yeah. Cool. OK. All right. <laughs> I think that's it. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.